Good afternoon, everybody. This is Hunter Mazingo bringing you your daily market insight video here on Monday, January 3rd, approximately three minutes after market close, 4.03 p.m. Eastern time here in Jacksonville. And today we had a somewhat rare occurrence. We had growth in defensives weak simultaneously. You don't see that often. They tend to move opposite of each other. Uh, more often than not, today, some really odd action and very extreme sector bifurcation uh, as well. So we're going to get into all of that and kind of some of the crazy stuff that went on on the first trading day of the year. But first, let's talk about what just happened, right? Indices all green. So that's a positive on the first day of the year. And I mentioned extreme sector bifurcation. We're going to look at some of those oddities that occurred today today. Uh, within defensives versus growth or specific areas within growth. We're going to look at that here in a moment because it is a really interesting day. Uh, G5 was actually green, but really only because of uh, ARKK getting carried by Tesla. ARKK was up about two and a half percent. The other G5 members were down with the exception of IWO, which was getting a boost from some of the oil and gas and uh, other sectors that are in IWO. But G5 slightly green thanks to IWO and ARKK. S&P up 0.64, Q's up a little under 1%, Dow up a little under three quarters of a percent, mid caps up one third of a percent, and the Russell 2000 up about 1.2. Market state, no change, stays in uptrend, uh, and trend gauge, also no change. We do see small caps trying to come back to life. We see them uh, getting back above the 200 today by just a teeny little bit, trying to get back above the 50. So once again, I know I've said it a couple of times, these small yellow arrows will start to come off if the market can continue to trend higher and small caps can get their act together. So that's where we're at with the trend gauge for the time being market leaders, short term, medium and long term remain bullish. These two little yellow arrows here pointing towards neutral will be removed if small caps can get their act together while the remaining members of the market uh, continue higher. So let's talk about Revere for a quick second and then let's get into the charts and look at some of this really weird action for lack of a better term that we saw today. So if you have a question on anything I cover in the video, any stock, ETF, index, doesn't matter. Send me an email, hunterreverasset.com. I will happily respond to you. Um, If you're interested in what we do, what our strategy is, you can email me or you can email anybody on this page, Dan, Tim, Merrill, Alex, or Don at reverasset.com as well. And so let's go ahead and dive right into the charts, everybody. We're going to get right here into the indices. Then we're going to take a quick look at TLT after this. But uh, you saw on Don's video on Friday, you said day four of consolidation. Well, today kind of got somewhat of an answer out of that consolidation. A bounce off the eight on the S&P right back up to kind of the previous highs here, pretty close to it. So the S&P, SPY, for the time being, respecting that eight day moving average, which is what you want to see after a big move up. That's kind of typically your first line of defense or your first kind of test of support. And it's great to see that that held. And we now see, like I've talked about over the last week, the 21 and the 50 continue to move upwards at a nice clip. 21 now around 470, 50 day on SPY around 465, 466. So uh, not crazy extended, one and a half or so from the 21, two and a half from the 50 on the S&P. The Q's pulled back in a little more recently uh, than the S&P, but a very similar pattern, kind of bouncing off the eight, a slight undercut there, but back above that 400 level, which is imperative. We've talked about that. And as you can see, kind of a similar situation to the S&P, about one and a half from the 21, around two and a half percent from the 50. Not crazy extended by any means. We've allowed these moving averages to continue to catch up as we've consolidated. So now we want to see, can we continue moving forward? We get some consecutive closes above 400 here on the queues. That's what we're looking for next. DIA, the Dow, continues to truck higher. As you can see, just within shouting distance there of pushing through to new highs, 366.72, excuse me, is the high from just a handful of days ago here on DIA. And once again, it's going to be really about the same. The Dow, the S&P, and the queues all kind of roughly in the same technical spot meaning they they all bounced off the eight more or less today. And they're all about one and a half percent from the 21 and a, around two to two and a half percent from the 50. So all kind of in a very similar pattern at the time being. MDY, 
stay in steady above these moving averages. We talked about this last week. We would want to see it go sideways, continue higher, whatever it's got to do. But we want to see this 50 day act as support. We want to see the eight cross up through the 21 and the 50. We got that kind of today slash uh, at the end of last week. So NDY for the time being is going sideways, allowing these moving averages to hook back up, which is what you want to see back through the 50. And now we want to see how does it act when it tests the support. And then lastly, IWM, I mentioned showing some signs of life, getting back above the 200, almost back above the 50. I would keep an eye on this one. If this blows through today's high tomorrow, it could, re it could get back above the 50 quickly. Uh, just something to watch. But nonetheless, watch today's high. That'll give you a good indication of if that 50 has been cleared. Uh, you could even use the 227 level as a good line in the sand as well. But for the time being, it is stuck right here between the 50 and the 21, but starting to look a lot more constructive. Quickly here, we're going to go to TLT. Down pretty big today, right? TLT down, meaning rates are up. And I believe that really impacted the market today where we saw that be a positive catalyst for banks and financials and a negative catalyst for areas like real estate and home builders. We're going to look at that in just a second. But TLT down big today, I thought that was worth noting. And the dollar UUP back above the 21 after a nasty day here on Friday. So TLT nasty move down, UUP getting back up, uh, above the 21, riding the ship a little bit there. Let's go to some of the big winners from today. Tesla one of our core holdings here in GrowTection up 13%. They announced really great delivery numbers over the course of the weekend and uh, just made a beeline for that 1200 spot. As you can see, closed more or less right on it. Uh, Tesla, one of the strongest stocks in the market and you can't see it perfectly here, but broke a, a pretty significant downtrend line there as well, uh, which is a, just a good sign for the market. This is one of, one of, if not the most important stock to the market. Uh, and has been for some time, uh, particularly important for growth stocks. A couple more here that we're having good days today. AMD up about 5%. Uh, semiconductors were hot today. Uh, no getting around it. AMD up 4.5%. NVIDIA, although it didn't have a, as good of a day as AMD, up 2%, finished near the bottom of the range. But semiconductors was one of the, the strongest areas out there today. AMBA up nearly 7%, as you can see. We also saw some of the mega cap names uh, not all but some apple up two and a half percent amazon having a nice day as well up about two two and a half percent um so some of these big tech major um big names that had the earnings that got the revenue seeing some life today as they have been uh over the course of 2021 we saw that with apple microsoft google now continuing that into the new year with apple oil and gas one of the strongest sectors today xop oil and gas production uh, expiration, excuse me, up 5% today. DVN, one of our holdings in protection, nice day today. And then additionally, we did buy MPC for protection today, Marathon Petroleum. You can see this eight through 21 cross right here about a week ago, right there, roughly on the 23rd, call it. Today, getting back up above the 50 with some conviction, clearing this high here with some conviction as well, which corresponds, as you can see, to this other 65 high too. So added or started a position in MPC oil, one of the better looking areas out there today. Oh, excuse me, MOS. This is one of the stronger parts of the market, the Kim Ag Group, MOS up two and a half percent today, CLF. Now this was initially much stronger in the morning. I wanna highlight something here. Uh, and Don actually just texted me about this a moment ago. CLF finishing at the bottom of the range, but still right on that 50. And then Nucor, which was also strong this morning, finishing at the bottom of the range. So really the opposite of what you would have wanted to see here. There was initial strength in a lot of these steel air, uh, steel stocks faded as the day went, went on pretty heavily. Uh, let's do a couple more good ones real quick before we get to some of the bad. Uh, let's see here, Jets, the travel ETF up 3% today. So a nice move from airlines, cruise lines, things of that nature. I mentioned banks and financials. KRE, this is a regional bank ETF, XLF, this is kind of the big finance ETF, the JP Morgans, the Goldman Sachs, and you can see both of these are having good days today. And additionally, two more semiconductors that I didn't mention, MU, another holding in protection up about 3% today, and then Marvell, uh, another holding up about 2% today. So semiconductors hot pretty much all around. However, and this is very odd, you don't normally have semiconductors having a wonderful day 
while most other growth is having a horrible day. And that's what happened today. Um, and interestingly enough, at the same time, you also had those defensive ETFs have a horrible day. They're not horrible, but not great. And so we saw things like consumer uh, staples, utilities, uh, real estate, healthcare, those types of things lag today, along with a lot of the high beta growth names. So let's look at some of that. And I'm gonna show you here, right? Like QQQJ, for example, big time lagger today, you know, not big time, but down when the markets were green. Uh, and you go look at something like XLU, the utilities ETF, when, when the G5 names are down, typically the defensive stuff is flat or holding up well, but we had some pretty vicious pullbacks. You can see there's a, a bounce on XLU, but down 1%, uh, XLV, the other defensive area, just a, a brutal move to the downside. Now granted, these are uptrends, no doubt about it. XLP, XLU, and XLV have made strong moves, but they were down today while growth stocks were also down. So XLP, XLU, XLV having a tough day. I mentioned real estate. Some of the fintech darlings that had tried to make a comeback also not looking so great. Affirm, Upstart, kind of both in the same boat. Uh, TTD down about 2% today. Datadog really got crushed today, down about 8%. Just a nasty breakdown there from where those moving averages were converged. FTNT also down like 7%. This is cybersecurity. So we saw software stocks get crushed today. We saw uh, just pretty much anything that had any type of heavy software, like Net, another one down about 4% today. I mean, a lot of these names, and I granted these charts don't look good, but anything software related really had a tough time today. Anything real estate related also had a tough time today. Maybe a response to the move in rates, but American Tower, typically one of the more stable and less volatile names out there. Uh, had about a four or five ATR move today to the downside. It was down four or five percent nearly at one point, uh, which is very out of character. I mean, you can look at this chart here. Uh, not a ton of candles that are this wide going back over the course of this year. So AMT having a rough day. Cube, another REIT, uh, down like four percent. Some very big volatility here for some things that are not normally all that volatile. Uh, a couple more here. Snow was another software name that had a tough day. It was down four or five percent at one point. Ended up finishing a little bit off the lows, but uh, a really, really bifurcated day in the market with home builders being extremely weak. ITB down nearly three percent for a sector ETF. That's pretty uh, significant. ITB extremely weak. Industrials were were weak. Utilities, healthcare, real estate, uh, and some of the strongest sectors were oil, and they were significantly stronger, XOP up 5%, OIH up 6%. So very uh, big time bifurcation amongst the sectors today and amongst stocks. Uh, Tesla being up 14% probably mask a lot of what was going on under the hood as well. Uh, but big time bifurcation. We saw a lot of the stuff that worked into the end of the year get faded hard today. And some of the stuff that wasn't doing so great into the end of the year show some strength today. So. That wraps it up for today. I know that was a little bit long, maybe not too bad, but I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, and I will see you all on Thursday's video as well as the podcast this week. Actually, I, I believe I have Friday's video this week. So I'll see you on Friday's video as well as the podcast. Uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email. But I hope you all have a great week. I hope you have a great new year. And I look forward to doing a lot more videos with you guys. So thank you and have a good one.